Hey guys, it's Chili B here again. Today we're taking a look at Halls of Olympia again and getting an update on some of the big changes as well as taking a deeper look at their tokenomics which they released in a Medium article not too long ago. They've currently got an Aelin pool open, part of which is available to ETH lizards and it's going for the next five and a half-ish days. So this is a pretty good time I think to get this update out and hopefully it will help you think through if you want to invest in it or not. But, as always, this isn't financial advice. It's never financial advice. You're responsible for your own assets and your own money. This is just information. You know the deal. There's three major things to update on since the last video I made. First one is a new ecosystem. Second one is their tokenomics deep dive, deepish dive. And the third one is new utility. So all really interesting. And at the end, I'll try and pull it together to give my take on where I think the protocol is going. First one off the rank is the new ecosystem. So previously they were integrating into the Ohm ecosystem. You might remember this diagram from my previous video where I described Ohm as a protocol which was trying to become the reserve currency of the crypto world or of Web3. In their distribution stage, they were handing out tokens in return for treasury assets. And in the utilization stage, Halls of Olympia comes in to try and build out utilization for that reserve currency in different ways. But Halls of Olympia has actually moved away from the Ohm ecosystem. They initially took inspiration from them, but what I've found out since is they've actually branched off and really become their own thing. And from chatting to Yams, that's partially because Ohm has taken a new direction and isn't really building an ecosystem in the way that they originally were planning to. But also the game just developed and grew and they've integrated now into a new ecosystem. If you've been following them on Twitter, you'll have seen a ton of partnerships with them over the past few weeks. And those partnerships basically tell us what ecosystem they're now moving into. Some of their new partners include GMX, which is a perpetuals exchange, Dopex, which is an options exchange, GMD, which is a yield optimizer, and JonesDAO, which is like an options vault. Basically a way to have complicated option strategies without having to manage it yourself. You just put your money into a vault and it manages the complicated strategy for you. And they've got a few other partnerships like with TreasureDAO and a couple of other GameFi-ish partners. But these ones stand out to me because they're really DeFi focused. And all of their partnerships, at least the ones that I saw, are basically the big hitters of the Arbitrum ecosystem, which is currently one of the biggest chains out there in terms of TVL. Jumping over to DeFi Llama and looking at TVL based on chains, we can see Ethereum's at the top, 24 billion, BSC next at 5.5, Tron, I don't know how Tron's got so much money, but they're at 4.4, then Polygon at 1 billion, and Arbitrum also at 1 billion. Basically tied for fourth place for the highest TVL, and definitely most out of the ETH Layer 2 chains. So that's the new ecosystem. Arbitrum and ETH Layer 2 with really DeFi heavy protocols partnering up with them. Keep that in mind as we get towards the end and try and pull all this together. Next up, tokenomics. Let's jump to their Medium article quickly to get some context. They see an undesirable pattern where projects rush out a token that has basically no functionality. And then what they do is make basically promises, which might or might not be worth anything, about future utility like governance rights or something else. And if you've been in DeFi for a little while, you've definitely seen some projects do that. I think this is a really good observation here where they say that this idea of governance is some kind of ideal where every member of the project votes on decisions and they have some valuable input and they have these deep debates about where different projects should go. But the reality is probably most users don't actually want this responsibility and they don't even use their tokens to vote. And they don't contribute to the DAO, at least not in that way. They might contribute in lots of other ways, but it seems like a lot of DAO members are actually not too interested in the governance aspect. So when Halls of Olympia came to build their model, they wanted to try and build something that has actual utility and actual token incentive alignment. And here's their attempt at it. Some tokenomic basics. It's got a max supply of 10 million. It's broken up with 15% to the team, 10% to seed. 5% to partners and advisors, 10% to public sale, 60% to community distribution. I like that public sales at about 10%. That seems to be a bit bigger than most public sales. 
I think this Aelin pool actually counts under the seed allocation. And if you're interested, the token is going for a dollar fifty in the Aelin pool, dollar fifty USDC, and the token name is Ambrosia, which is AMBR for short. Back to the tokenomics. A couple of things to note for the allocation. The team is vested for two years and it's pre-staked. Stake tokens will get some revenue distribution, which is what we're going to look at in a second. The seed tokens are vested for one year and also pre-staked. And the community tokens, which are going to go out as reward incentives or prizes for winning competitions or whatever. The portion of the community tokens, which are not yet distributed, are also staked. And the portion of revenue distribution that comes from those staked tokens goes straight into the treasury to extend the runway. There's obvious pros and cons of that. Negatively for the investor, it means that there's a big chunk of money sitting there staked, soaking up a big portion of the revenue. But the positive side of that is that the runway for the project gets extended pretty significantly as long as they're pulling in revenue. Okay, let's jump into how the staking and the revenue distribution works. So an investor has some Ambrosia, they stake it, they become eligible for revenue distribution, they get the revenue. So that's a pretty standard use case for a token. It's probably actually the best use case you can have for a token. Direct revenue from the project goes to the token holder. So you see tons of GameFi projects do that. You've got Alluvium, Thalon, which Ethosids are also invested in. I think most GameFi projects has this mechanism in some form. Otherwise, it's just not going to be too attractive for people to want to hold the token long term. Next question is, how does revenue get generated? So you've got players who want to participate in the game world. They create in-game economic transactions. Presumably, not every transaction that happens within the game is economic. So this is only true for the economic in-game transactions. The cost of whatever's going on just goes into the game world. So if you're buying a sword or if you're placing a bet or whatever, the price of that just goes into the game world and floats around the game world economy. But a little levy is taken on that transaction and put into the treasury. No details yet on how big that levy is. But 5% of that levy will stay in the treasury. And in future, governance will decide that once governance becomes decentralized. And the other 95% goes to revenue distribution. So you're getting a pretty nice chunk of the levies on in-game economic transactions. And presumably the more people that make in-game economic transactions and the more expensive those transactions are, the more revenues generated. Again, pretty similar to a lot of other games at the moment. What's interesting and what I haven't seen in other games yet is that Halls of Olympia has an incentive for investors to also become gamers. In a subset of the in-game transactions, I don't think all of them count, but if an Ambrosia staker performs some subset of these economic in-game transactions that Halls of Olympia deems to be part of this, they actually get a bonus to the revenue distribution in the form of a boost to the APY that they'd receive from RevDiz. So if the regular APY was 5%, but you're a staker who also participates in Halls of Olympia in a particular way, you might get 6% or 7%. Who knows how much of the boost is. So that becomes an interesting incentive to make stakers also want to be gamers, and then gamers who are already playing the game and doing these transactions also want to be stakers, because why not stake a bit of Ambrosia and get a bit of money back for all these transactions I'm doing anyway? I can imagine that working pretty well for a subset of people. A second use of Ambrosia that's worth having a look at is as a pseudo gas fee. I say pseudo because it's not really used to pay for gas. It's kind of like just another fee on top of the levy. They mentioned that the Ambrosia gas fee will be pretty tiny and they put it on the scale of Phantom or of Matic. So it's probably going to be like 0.01 or 0.001 of an Ambrosia, which would just be a cent or something or less than a cent. So it's not much of a fee but that Ambrosia goes straight into the treasury and 100% of it stays there. And this is interesting again because it's slowly taking Ambrosia off the market. Probably at some time in the future it will make its way back in, but there's a constant sink for Ambrosia. It's interesting to think about the game theory of this. The gas fee isn't huge, so it's not taking very much Ambrosia off the market, but it is taking some. The interesting thing is the response of the player. Presumably every player that plays this game 
will then want to keep one or two or five Ambrosia in their wallet just for all these transactions. And if there's 10,000 or 100,000 players, that's 50,000 or 500,000 Ambrosia just sitting in wallets, staying there and not being sold just so people can participate. So it's an interesting way to reduce the circulating supply of Ambrosia. A possible negative is that people will just be annoyed that they have to have this in their wallet all the time on top of what they use to pay for actual gas. But because the amount's so small, it might not turn off that many people. It might be a bit annoying, but out of all the players that would play Halls of Olympia, I think only a small sliver would be turned off because they have to hold one or two Ambrosia in their wallet. So it could be a really good idea or it might turn some people off. We'll have to wait and see. But presumably, even if it does turn people off, it seems like a thing that they could remove pretty easily. And then on top of that, you can use Ambrosia for all types of other in-game stuff. So temporary in-game boosts and I'm sure a whole bunch of other things as well. So that's their attempt at creating a genuinely useful token. It's basically taking what seems to be the best model at the moment, which is stake the token get rift is, and adding a few extra tweaks on top of that. So I'm pretty curious to see where it goes. It's got the potential to work. And then the third thing is new utility. Thinking back to their new partners, you'll notice that a lot of those partners, or all of those partners that I mentioned at least, generate some sort of yield-bearing asset. So you might lock your money in GLP or a Jones Vault or whatever and earn APY from that. But the asset that you get in return, the receipt token, or the asset that actually bears the yield, is just illiquid and it just sits there. Basically, it's just inefficient use of capital. What Halls of Olympia is trying to do is get that illiquid capital moving and flowing again. So all their partners, or most of their partners, have these yield-bearing assets, and they just normally sit in your wallet. But when Halls of Olympia releases, suddenly they'll be able to use these yield-bearing assets, so like GLP from GMX, as entry fees or as betting pools or as payments. And I think that's a pretty huge thing, and I think you'll see why or at least you'll see why I think so when we put it all together. So what are they trying to do? They've got a new ecosystem and it's heavily filled with DeFi degens, people that are into GMX and into JonesDAO and all those sorts of Arbitrum DeFi plays. They've got new tokenomics and particularly they've got a mechanism that encourages investors to become players and players to become investors. And they're also working on capital efficiency. So they've provided a way for illiquid yield-bearing assets to become liquid and start moving around and flowing. So where's that all going? I think what they're doing is they're trying to enter an untapped market. And that market is the market of itchy degens who are just sitting around in a bear market. So if you're a degen, which a lot of us are, you're almost certainly a bag holder as well. And you might believe in the project but your bags are just sitting there idle. And as a degen, that probably drives you crazy. So Halls of Olympia, I think, is trying to get into that market and make all those illiquid bags start flowing. And the way they're trying to do that is through a simple game that's not overly complex, because I think an overly complex game might actually lose your average DeFi user. I'm sure there's a big overlap between DeFi users and gamers, but to capture that whole market, I think the game has to be pretty simple. And a deterministic game like Halls of Olympia might be the right move for that. Because in the end, I think hardcore degens will always be degens. They might play games, but they'll never be gamers. But give them a simple analytical game where you just have to figure out who has the best chance of winning and then you bet big on it. And I think that'll attract a lot of them. Because basically that's degen investing. Except in a bear market, you can't invest like a degen. But if you had a game that really mimicked degen investing, you could possibly pull them in. So they've possibly got a couple of things going for them. It might be the right timing to launch a game like this because it's in the bottom of a bear market. Degens don't have much to do. There's not huge APYs to go out there and find. This might give them a way to scratch that itch while at the same time holding on to their long-term bags that they believe will take off. And the other thing is that I think it's the right chain. Arbitrum's got one of the biggest TVLs. They've got a lot of unique DeFi protocols on there. They've got a lot of yield-bearing assets on there that are sitting unused. And Arbitrum also hasn't dropped their token yet. So likely when that happens, there'll be a bit of a run-up as well. 
although the high TVL that's on there now might actually just be in anticipation of Arbitrum Odyssey happening. But that's the new look at Halls of Olympia. It's gone from an Ohm ecosystem to an Arbitrum ecosystem. It's got some interesting tokenomic tweaks that could really work, and it's possibly tapping into a whole bunch of liquidity that's sitting there unused. So if these pieces fall in place, and if Halls of Olympia is an interesting enough game to pull in those users and pull in that liquidity, it's really got the potential to take off. So have a think through that. They've got the Aelin pool open for a little while longer, but this is not financial advice. I don't know which way it's going to go. It could take off or it could tank. You'll have to do your due diligence and figure that out for yourself. But if you liked this, if it was helpful, please give me a like and I'd really appreciate a subscribe and I'll catch you next time.